So, hello everyone, we will continue with the thermal uh, comfort. This uh, in this segment uh, we are now discussing the basic uh, factors which controls the thermal uh, comfort sensation and uh, the basic uh, there are six factors we have mentioned and uh, uh, we have discussed uh, the air temperature, radiant temperature, air velocity and uh, now we are discussing the environmental one of the environmental related factors which is humidity related factors. So, which is uh, extremely important the factor that uh, typically and this humidity uh, related factor we cannot consider in isolation. It has to be in uh, combination with other factors like uh, air temperature or radiant temperature. Uh, so, uh, typically uh, humidity between uh, 40 to 70 percent relative humidity does not have uh, much impact on uh, thermal comfort. And if it is more than that, it is a in a, and a 70 percent and particularly in warm condition. So, hot and humid condition, then main problem would be that uh, uh, our body will not be able to uh, evaporate the, our, so the whatever sweat it uh, generates. So, it will not be able to evaporate. So, then uh, uh, the evaporative cooling will not be there. So, high humidity environment have a lot of vapor in uh, uh, the air which prevents the uh, evaporation of sweat from the skin. So, at high and uh, hot humidity, so it is uh, extremely uncomfortable, but if there is uh, air flow at that uh, humidity, so we may feel uh, comfortable. So, it is related to the air flow also. The evaporation of sweat uh, is the main method of uh, heat loss of human in hot environment as we have seen. So, that is uh, that uh, evaporation is actually assisted by the air flow and in uh, any personal protective clothing like uh, firefighter clothing, if uh, the wearer is not able to the uh, release of that uh, evaporation of the sweat, if it is the it is a uh, vapor permeability is poor. So, in that case he will not be able to be comfortable. Okay. Uh, now, uh, the next uh, factor is the clothing related factor, the clothing insulation which is very important for to keep uh, body thermally comfort. So, uh, by clothing by its very nature interferes with our ability to lose heat to the environment. So, if we want to restrict the heat loss or we can increase the insulation of the clothing. So, thermal comfort is very much uh, dependent on the insulation uh, characteristics of clothing. Wearing too much clothing is sometime creates problem, because it will give unnecessary the insulation which may cause the heat stress. So, it is a primary cause of heat stress in uh, that uh, personal protective equipment. So, if the clothing does not provide enough insulation. So, on the other hand if it does not provide enough insulation. So, that means, it will our, will our body will lose heat unnecessary at higher rate. So, uh, we may land up with either frost bite or hypothermia okay, in extreme cold condition. So, clothing insulation and control of this clothing insulation is very important. So, that we will discuss uh, with the different studies how to control this clothing insulation. So, clothing is both potential cause of uh, thermal discomfort as well as it controls the it actually uh, it enhance the comfort as it adapt to the climate in which we live in or uh, uh, it is uh, we play. So, we may add layers of clothing. So, uh, depending on the type of environment, so we can adapt gradually. If we need uh, the to restrict our uh, body heat to go out at higher rate, we may keep on adding the layer. And if we feel it is uh, uh, it it is uh, the it is giving higher insulation, we may remove. So, that way 
by changing the type of uh, clothing we can control the uh, our heat balance. So, it is important to identify how the clothing may contribute to, to contribute to thermal comfort or discomfort. So, for a particular condition, so for a particular uh, air temperature uh, in front of radiant heat temperature or in a particular air uh, humidity or air velocity. So, we have to select uh, depending on our uh, uh, physiological condition, we have to select uh, the particular clothing to keep ourselves comfortable. It may be insulating or uh, higher insulating, higher insulation or lower insulation. So, accordingly we have to select our clothing. So, it is very important and uh, last one is that uh, metabolic heat. So, different uh, it depends on the it, it uh, varies uh, from person to person. So, depending and uh, different level of activities. So, at different level of activities and uh, uh, for a different person. So, if we know the uh, level of metabolic heat, then we can select our clothing. So, the more physical work we do, so higher will be the metabolic heat will produce and uh, more heat we produce, higher rate of heat loss we should actually we have to have otherwise our body will get overheated. So, uh, and uh, the impact of uh, metabolic rate on thermal comfort it is very critical persons uh, physical characteristic should always be kept into mind. So, depend it, uh, there are various factors like uh, it is uh, it is his weight, age, fitness, okay, height. So, the all these things actually actually related with the it controls the type of metabolic heat. So, and uh, and the thermal uh, behavior of human body and uh, transmission characteristics of um, is it is uh, shown by this uh, diagram. So, heat actually um, uh, heat flows uh, in and out by conduction, convection and radiation or uh, by sweat evaporation. So, um, basically it is a mainly the heat is in a, in a dry heat, it is released uh, through clothing by conduction, convection or radiation. This is the dry heat okay. and uh, in case of say heat also we release in terms of uh, the moisture in liquid or uh, in uh, vapor form. So, in the form of latent heat at various phase it uh, actually we release heat transferred by the this process of condensation or evaporation or by freezing or melting. So, the latent heat uh, at different form it gets uh, transferred. So, moisture transmission through uh, clothing we will discuss in the next segment in detail by water uh, vapor diffusion. Okay convection in uh, void space within the textile structure, moisture diffusion in uh, fiber surface, liquid water diffusion through capillary which we normally know uh, it is known as the wicking characteristics capillary channel, moisture condensation sometime moisture get condensed if the path is longer and it is an extreme cold condition it gets condensed or evaporates and freezing freezing or melting may take place. So, these are the moisture related phenomena and clothing assembly and uh, this entrapped steel air influence the heat and mass transmission of the human. So, in it uh, heat transmission actually majorly depend on the how the clothing entrap the steel air. So, that we will see that uh, uh, by controlling the amount of entrapped heat, we may uh, we may control the heat and mass transmission. So, if we can entrap uh, more and more air inside uh, the clothing ensemble, so we can uh, increase the insulation without uh, increasing the mass, without increasing the amount of quantity of uh, material. Also, we can uh, we can uh, control the uh, moisture transmission. So, if you see 
the generation of body heat that is uh, biological and physical activities in terms of metabolic heat. So, it is a thermal comfort is achieved by release of heat by sweating by various other physiological uh, activities. So, we can achieve the thermal comfort and it is by it is basically through we have to do uh, all these things through clothing and by uh, the means of the heat transmission through clothing. One is the dry heat transmission through the clothing by conduction, convection and uh, radiation. Another way is that through moisture transmission that is water vapor diffusion, liquid mo moisture diffusion through fiber or various uh, through various mechanisms. This part we will discuss when we will discuss the moisture related uh, comfort aspects. Now, we are going to discuss in detail the dry heat uh, transmission. So, as we have uh, mentioned that with the uh, increase in activity, human activity or uh, the metabolic heat generation increases. So, as we increase the activity, so, so it uh, generates uh, more and more heat. So, uh, we can see that at when we sit, uh, so we sleep, it generates around 35 to 45 watt per square meter. That is the type of heat we generate, but when we uh, some uh, play an high active uh, game, so we may generate approximately 10 times of that heat we generate. Now, let us try to see the our human body. How it. So, if we see our human body, it as we have discussed that it is a it uh, receives the heat, it does not reflect back. So, human body absorbs all the electromagnetic radiation. So, that is which, which is the which is the nature of the black body. So, human body we can consider as uh, equivalent to black body. So, no EMR electromagnetic radiation pass through or reflect. Okay. So, the object appears black when it is cold that is why it is called black body, but in as the temperature increases. So, the but at particular temperature if the black body surrounded by other objects in thermal equilibri equilibrium condition, then it emits exactly as much as it absorbs okay. called it is called black body radiation. So, it will start radiating the heat okay, if it is surrounded by the, uh, the different objects. Okay. The wavelength of the emitted light is directly proportional to the temperature of the object. So, that is at room temperature it emits only the infrared light okay, which is not visible, but as the temperature increases it starts emitting the visible light. So, for any if we uh, uh, increase the temperature, so it will start emitting the visible light. So, that uh, the human body can be considered as, as black body, the human energy is radiated in the form of electromagnetic radiation. So, we start we whatever heat we generate we uh, actually release the heat in the form of electromagnetic radiation. So, the net power radiation is it is a whatever the power we radiate whatever heat we radiate it is a basically it is a difference between the power emitted and power absorbed. So, we keep on absorbing the heat and we also release the heat. So, net emission is uh, net emitted heat is the that is the difference between that and the total heat. Now, try to see the simple calculation the total heat energy radiated by an adult male in one day is about 200 kilo calorie. Okay. So, that the whatever uh, food calorie we store the total throughout the day we emit 
2000 calorie 2 kilo uh, 2000 kilo calorie okay heat we emit so that much heat we emit now let us see the calculation as we have seen that um, primary metabolic rate say when we sleep a uh, typical value is at 40 year old male healthy male is about 35 kilocalorie per square meter per hour that is the rate which we produce okay which is equivalent to 1700 kilocalorie per day so if we uh, how do we get this 1700 because 35 kilocalorie per square meter per hour our if we assume the our body surface area uh, 2 square meter so 35 multiplied by 24 hour in a day multiplied by 2 so we get uh, around 1700 1700 kilocalorie per day so a person actually release that heat 1700 kilocalorie it's a uh, that uh, it's a uh, it generates that much heat Okay. So, this is the heat he generates when he is sleeping 1700 kilocalorie heat. Now, if we see when he is little bit active we are we normally do not sleep 24 hours we if we active. So, average activity if we see it is typically 1 point uh, it is a 70 percent more than this this 35. So, it is average activity it is 50 to 70 percent more than that the when he is sleeping. So, that means, it is a more 50 to 70 percent greater than the bustle rate. So, ultimately what are we getting? So, uh, it is if you see 70 percent. So, uh, 1700 he is uh, generating for 24 hours multiplied by 1.7. So, so multiplied by 1.7. Okay. So, the thermal loss that is mechanism of the body it is a conduction which is uh, very low we have already seen earlier the through conduction it is a low because most of the uh, textile materials are insulating in nature even uh, air is insulation uh, insulating convection is uh, very high when it is a very significant when it is a air is blowing it is a forced convection radiation is very high sometime uh, if uh, in case of forced convection when air velocity is very high. So, it may actually suppress the radiation also otherwise radiation is uh, uh, generally very high and then evaporation. So, in case of if the dry condition dry air condition. So, uh, humidity is low so evaporation will be high. So, we are discussing the radiative heat. So, radiative heat uh, loss the heat loss by radiation is approximately two third of the total heat loss by other total method total mechanism. So, conduction, convection, radiation and evaporation among all this the if you take if we take all this together two third of this is by the radiation as radiation is normally high. So, that means, if we see 1700 is the heat uh, he is generating throughout the day when he is sleeping multiplied by 1.7 because he is not sleeping he is active. So, 70 percent higher than that 1.7 and multiplied by 2 third. So, it is coming out to be 2000. So, 2000 that uh, this uh, value we have discussed earlier. So, so 2000 kilocalorie he is generating heat okay person is actually uh, it's a radiating the radiative heat is typically 2000 okay so ambient air motion causing forced convection okay as we have discussed sometime actually reduces the relative importance of the radiative heat loss so in that case if it is air is moving then this factor 1.7 won't be there it may be 1.5 or maybe 1.4 so in that way so, the radiative heat loss will be uh, lower than 
the other heat loss. So, in that total heat loss will remain same, but this factor 2, two third and 1.7 may get changed, but in normal condition. So, it is uh, typically 2000 kilocalorie. So, another thing is that our uh, as we have discussed it is uh, it is not st steady state condition. Our body cannot be norm, uh, it is normally it uh, is not in steady state condition and um, heat uh, heat flow condition is always in dynamic. So, uh, basically throughout the year season changes. So, our temperature gets changed in summer, winter, even, even it is a uh, humidity condition changes. And uh, in addition to this, uh, the atmospheric condition like temperature, vapor pressure, air velocity is always change. So, it is, uh, but uh, if we feel that okay, a particular cloth will keep ourselves comfortable throughout the day, throughout the year, it is not possible. So, due to all these variables. So, internal body condition also changes. So, our metabolic uh, uh, rate, our activity level also changes. So, accordingly uh, if we want to keep our self comfortable, thermally comfortable, we have to actually use different types of clothing. So, our total thermal behavior always changes depending on the quantity of food consumption also, okay, nature of activities. So, these are the factors which come. So, discomfort arises when there is an imbalance. So, uh, this is the these are the conditions the summer, winter, our activity level, our type of uh, air velocity, type of vapor pressure. So, all this activity, all these uh, factors actually uh, controls the thermal comfort nature, but uh, we feel discomfort when there is an imbalance between the atmosphere and internal condition. There has to be proper balancing of heat balancing, otherwise we will feel in, uh, uncomfortable. So, the clothing requirement should be balanced with the external atmospheric condition and internal heat production. So, that these things always changes. So, our external environmental condition always changes, our body physiological condition, body, body heat uh, production is uh, always changes, but our clothing has to be such that it make keeps the balance okay so that we feel comfortable so um, that means our body core temperature should be around 37 degree celsius irrespective of anything any climatic condition okay and any physical physiological activities okay so under steady state condition although we hardly reach any steady state condition the energy produced by the body should be equal to the rate of heat transferred from the body. So, we know that it is a uh, typically it is a five mechanisms conduction, convection, radiation, evaporation and respiration. So, if we assume that the heat exchange from the unit surface area of body to the environment then the general heat balance equation is this. This is the general heat balance equation per unit area of the body. So, uh, this takes care of all these principles of all these mechanisms of uh, heat transfer. So, what are this? So, m is the metabolic rate which actually our body produce and w is the external work which is lost. The metabolic heat is lost by some external physical work also. So, that m minus w which is the net heat inside our body which has to come out from the body by the it is his heat loss by convection by heat loss by uh, conduction which is normally it is very low convection uh, convective heat loss is it depends on the air velocity heat loss due to uh, respiration sensible respiration it is a there which may not be directly related to the clothing. Heat loss by radiation may be through clothing or may be open area E uh, rays is the uh, evaporative heat loss due to respiration and heat loss uh, by evaporation from the skin. 
So, uh, this is from the skin uh, evaporative heat loss by uh, respiration, these are not uh, directly related to the this clothing okay. and the heat loss by conduction is that the rate of heat loss by conduction is influenced by the nature of clothing. So, this is the conduction which we can control by if we can control the clothing uh, type of clothing. So, the let us discuss one by one the this equation for heat loss uh, due to convection is uh, C is the heat loss due to uh, convection that we have seen earlier it is a convection which is equal to it is a watt per square meter in, in here uh, all these are converted into watt per square meter which is uh, it is a um, uh, product of clothing factor area factor F C L is the clothing area factor coefficient of convective heat transfer H C okay, and T C L clothing surface area temperature of clothing surface and uh, T A is the ambient uh, air temperature. So, as uh, from this equation we know that as if we uh, increase the clothing area factor and uh, if the convective heat transfer is high and if the temperature difference is high then we will have higher convective heat transmission. So, what is clothing area factor? It is a basically it is a ratio clothing area factor is ratio the area which is actually covered by our cloth by the total area of a total area of the body. So, it it is a ACL is a it is a area by cloth body okay and uh, A D it is a it is a total area of nude body total area. Similarly, for mannequin also for mannequin test it is A C L by A A is the total area of the mannequin. So, that is a um, so that means, higher is the value or uh, uh, this uh, is F C L is that uh, that a clothing area factor. So, the, the convective heat transfer coefficient H it depends on the air velocity. Okay. So, it is basically directly related to the air velocity if we increase the velocity of air. So, convective heat transfer coefficient will change. So, it is a basically it is a function of air, air velocity and also it depends upon the position of the person and orientation to the air. Base. So, if uh, the if uh, the orientation towards the uh, towards uh, air flow it, it, it changes the that H C value that is convective heat transfer coefficient value changes. So, uh, uh, if the air velocity is uh, air flow is some in a particular direction, okay. if the uh, person's position changes, so that H C value will get changed. So, H C is depending on the on the uh, mainly on the air, air velocity and also to some extent on the position and uh, relative position of the person. So, there are studies uh, carried out. So, H C value has been uh, plotted against the velocity of air. So, it is a this is an empirical equation. So, which has been which is this is the 12.1 uh, multiplied by uh, velocity to the power 0 0.5. So, this is the uh, empirical equation from where we can get some idea about the this uh, the value of this H C this is the coefficient and uh, clothing area factor the F C L we have uh, that clothing it is uh, can be evaluated by following empirical equation. So, that we know the clothing area, area factor is the ratio, but uh, there are uh, there is another um, uh, empirical formula which is related with the flow of the uh, that is insulation of the clothing. So, this is the clothing area, area factor F C L it is uh, although it is unitless, but it is actually empirically this is uh, we can get this value. Okay. If we know the flow of the it is directly related with the flow of the clothing because it is a um, uh, higher uh, area covered will uh, means higher uh, clothing area factor that will indirectly give the value of the flow. Okay. Now, uh, radiative heat loss as we know that it is a uh, it depends on the mean temperature of the surrounding environment and temperature of the clothing surface and characteristics of clothing and environment. So, this is the basically it is a it is basically the temperature difference 
So, uh, this uh, radiative heat loss and the equation for radiative heat loss as we have also seen earlier. So, it is a basically uh, this is the equation radiative heat loss r is actually it is a uh, function of the fourth order of the temperature. So, if we see the where this sigma is the Stephen Boltzmann's constant okay. and uh, what is Stephen Boltzmann uh, law? It is a basically total energy that radiates per unit surface area of a black body in unit time is proportional to the fourth power of the thermodynamic temperature. This is the it is actually it uh, changes with the fourth power of the thermodynamic and uh, epsilon C L is the emissivity of the clothing. So, if we can control the emissivity of the clothing, we can control the R value okay. and uh, T F is the so T R is the radiant temperature okay. that is if that uh, the radiant temperature here it is a it is a less than it is a, that is a, a, the temperature of the surrounding environment it is a it is here in this case if it is less than uh, the body uh, the clothing surface temperature that means we will uh, release the heat and f v f means it is a view factor view factor between body and surrounding okay it is about 75 percent it is a view factor that is effective area of the body for radiation. So, that is the view factor and heat loss uh, mechanism which are not directly related with the clothing is that this is the rest of other mechanism that is uh, that is heat loss due to respiration we will not consider here evaporative heat loss due to respiration latent heat and removal of heat from the body by uh, due to the evaporation of perspiration from the skin that is the that is which is actually uh, this skin means which is not covered by the clothing. If it is covered that means our clothing will come into picture. Okay. Now, we will uh, discuss uh, the Newton's law of cooling and how this law helps us to derive the equation for thermal resistance or thermal transmittance. So, what is Newton law of cooling? It states that the rate of change of the temperature of an object is proportional to the difference between its own temperature and ambient temperature. So, if the, the difference that, uh, that is high that is the heat uh, flux heat uh, the temperature difference is high that means, the rate of change of temperature will be high. So, it is proportional. So, rate of change of temperature is a dt d capital T the temperature by dt uh, the time. So, is uh, proportional to the difference between the temperature between the material and the ambient temperature T A. Okay. So, uh, d t by d t is uh, proportional to the T of uh, the material and T of the ambient temperature. Okay and where T T is the temperature of any material at time T and T 0 we will see it is the initial temperature because a temperature keeps on changing ok. The temperature rate of change of temperature T A is the ambient temperature ok. So, at any time uh, at, uh, at initially it was T 0. So, at certain after certain time it is a rate of change of due to uh, temperature change it has become T T. So, this uh, rate is proportional to the temperature difference. So, initially if it is say it is a say um, at a lower temperature. So, it is a so that time the temperature difference was high. So, the rate of change of temperature was uh, high. So, so, clearly if the material is warmer than the ambient temperature. So, T T minus T A is uh, more than 0 
then the material cools down. So, it is a typical it is a uh, if it is warmer than environment material will cools down which means that the derivative d t d t should be negative. So, that means that is why this uh, negative sign is given here okay, and k is the positive constant which is known as the cooling constant. So, this uh, the proportionality and then it is a k is a constant. So, d t d t equal to minus k t t minus t a this is the general formula where k is the cooling constant. Now, the difference between material and ambient temperature at time t y t is a function of t is equal to t t minus t a and at initial stage y 0 t 0 minus t a when at the time t equal to 0. Now, the uh, derivative of y t if we try to get the derivative using Newton's law of cooling. So, what are we getting d y d t d y d t equal to d d t by t t minus t a. So, ultimately we get the d y d t equal to minus k y. So, now this uh, actually solving this uh, differential equation finally, we get this is the value. So, if we solve this e differential equation y t equal to y e to the power minus k t this is the solution of this uh, differential equation where and we if we replace y t by t t minus t a and y 0 by t 0 minus t a. So, we will get this uh, form and by rearranging this we will get t t equal to t a plus t 0 minus. So, this is the generalized form of uh, from the Newton's law of cooling. So, by rearranging again we get this value. So, t 0 by t m ambient. So, uh, t a we, uh, we have used earlier. So, t o t 0 minus uh, t ambient equal to e to the power 1 by r c multiplied t. So, here if you see k, k is the cooling constant is has been replaced by 1 by r c where t is the temperature of the body at a particular moment, t 0 is the initial temperature of the body, t ambient temperature, t is the cooling time, this t is the cooling time and uh, this r, r is the thermal resistance. Here this uh, c is the thermal capacity of the system. So, k has been actually replaced by 1 by r c. So, where c is the thermal capacity of the system in joule per Kelvin, r 1 is the thermal uh, resistance of both the fabric medium and the air medium around that, the, this r is that uh, both this uh, medium. Now, if we try to segregate and that r becomes r 0 plus r, where r 0 is the thermal resistance of air and r is the thermal resistance of clothing layer. So, uh, and again by rearranging this, so this is the if we know the cooling constant from uh, Newton's law, then we can calculate the resistance of the clothing. So, resistance of the clothing we can by rearranging that equation we get in this form. So, where k 0 is the cooling constant of the system without any fabric, k is the cooling constant with fabric and c is the thermal capacity. From there, now this is one way of uh, expressing the thermal resistance of the clothing. Now, if we see the if we know the thermal resistance, the thermal resistance if we can calculate from there. So, as well as uh, knowing the thermal resistance as well as the fabric sample surface area. If we know the surface area and the thickness d surface area is, then we can calculate the thermal conductivity. So, thermal conductivity lambda is or the unit will be watt per meter Kelvin can be calculated by 1 by r multiplied by d by s. So, where r is the thermal resistance. 
another way of uh, um, uh, looking at that is a uh, it is a uh, th we can measure the, the heat transfer coefficient h. So, earlier we measured the thermal conductivity. So, this is the thermal conductivity lambda the unit is watt per meter Kelvin okay. and here the heat transfer coefficient is uh, the unit is uh, the h it is um, expressed in h which unit is watt per square meter Kelvin. So, that uh, heat transfer coefficient is another way of expressing the thermal conductivity of the clothing where d q d t is the uh, it is a uh, it is a measure of heat transfer rate that means, uh, it is a unit is in watt s is the area of the fabric. So, watt per square meter and uh, the temperature is a difference difference of temperature the average temperature uh, of the system and the ambient, ambient temperature that is a, that is the uh, in Kelvin. So, watt per square meter per Kelvin that is the uh, unit of heat transfer coefficient whereas, thermal conductivity the unit is watt per meter per Kelvin. So, that is uh, two uh, ways of expressing the thermal conductivity and uh, this is that uh, way of another way of expression the Newton's law of cooling is applied to evaluate the thermal properties of the textile material. So, this is uh, the way we can express. Now, after uh, knowing all these things, so uh, if we know that uh, the amount of heat and uh, thermal capacity, so that we can calculate the temperature of the body. Okay. So, d q d t into r is the thermal resistance of the body. So, uh, this r we can calculate. Now, after uh, all these things are steady state heat transmission, then uh, next is the transient heat transmission of uh, through clothing. So, what is transient heat transmission? The human body it is uh, normally it is in uh, temperature of human body is uh, it is 30 degree Celsius 37 degree Celsius sorry and uh, the skin temperature you know it is around say 34 degree mean skin temperature and clothing if we see clothing temperature is normally it is less than the skin temperature if it is there then heat will flow from the skin to the clothing and we will feel coolness. So, this uh, phenomena is called transient uh, heat flow and uh, the, the detailed transient heat flow uh, behavior we will discuss in the next class till then uh, thank you.